It's time for our second bout of the evening, and we go slightly above the middleweight division for KJ Harrison Lombardi taking on the pro debuting Mike Rodriguez, both fighters technically in the super middleweight division. Harrison weighing in at 163 and a half pounds, Rodriguez at 165. Rodriguez with a fairly significant height and reach advantage at 6'3 to Harrison Lombardi's 5'11. For the official ring introductions, we send it inside the ring to Rick Provost. This is the Pinnacle Vodka and Sousa Tequila bout. Your official for this bout is Joey Lapino. Let's meet the participants. This fight is scheduled for four rounds in the middleweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 165 pounds. First pro debut out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Please welcome Mike Rodriguez. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 163 and one half pound, with a professional record of three wins and one draw, out of Providence, Rhode Island. Please welcome KJ Harrison Lombardi. Four rounds, middleweights. The height advantage for Mike Rodriguez, noticeable as he stands across from KJ Harrison Lombardi as they're in the middle of the ring moments ago for referee Joey Lapino to give them instructions. KJ Harrison coming in this fight with a record of 3 0 oh, 1. Mike Rodriguez making his pro debut. You might say a tough pro debut for Mike Rodriguez considering the record and professional experience of his opponent, but he has some experience with KJ Harrison Lombardi. Definitely in KJ's last amateur fight, he actually lost uh, to Rodriguez. And uh, and one thing I noticed right off the bat, besides the height, even in the weights, um, KJ's campaigned most of his career at middleweight, and um, I don't think Rodriguez could ever see the 160 pound limit at that height. I'm sure that he's a natural super middleweight. So right here we got a middleweight against a super middleweight. Um, we got a super middleweight who has a win already over uh, KJ. So I think it's an interesting matchup uh, regardless of the pro experience. And if you couldn't tell from the way in which we described both fighters' heights, it is KJ Harrison Lombardi wearing the white trunks with what we'll call the red trim and Mike Rodriguez wearing the solid black trunks. Well, I don't think he minds if it's pink because I think he did that for breast cancer awareness. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and guess that's, uh, that's what he's doing. You're probably there. correct because he has the ribbon in the right leg. Yes. I'm just colorblind, so <laughs> feel free to correct me anytime. Rodriguez representing his, spring, his hometown of Springfield with the 413 on his trunks. The height, uh, the height advantage is definitely giving KJ a, a different look that he's seen as a professional. Um, it's, it's, and he's getting caught a little bit coming in. But you can see that Rodriguez has a little bit of the first fight jitters, I think. Springfield is a city with an interesting boxing scene. You have a fair amount of club fighters who compete on the club circuit from that city. You also have some legitimate prospects, a la Zach Ramsey, who we've seen a number of times on CES shows, who's looked excellent as of late as he has stepped up in opposition. In fact, I think Zach Ramsey may be one of the hottest, best prospects out of New England uh, overall. He's right up there, in my opinion, with Toka Khan. Um, he's right up there with, uh, with the midget, uh, Tremaine Williams. Uh, I think he's right on that same level. He's a really solid fighter. And on the national scene, really not heard of much, but I think that'll change in due time because he's exhibited plenty of skills in his short professional career in which he's complete, competed exclusively on CES cards. Round one of the scheduled four-rounder. 35 seconds from closing. And see right there, the height, the height gave, is giving KJ some problems in this round. And then KJ can't be on the outside. Right now he's at the end of his punches a lot. He needs to get closer, he needs to get on the inside, and he needs to work when he's on the inside. Right there, he's in no man's lane. He's right in within uh, Rodriguez's range, and he's gonna end up getting caught. That's what he needs to do, and he needs to throw a lot of punches when he's inside. Keep those arms free and let them go. Right 
Round one of the scheduled four-rounder comes to a conclusion between K.J. Harrison Lombardi and Mike Rodriguez. Teddy, your synopsis of what went on in round one. Uh, again, it was a, a tough round to score, I think, because you, you, both guys had their moments. Um, the only thing that I, I see in that round that, that's going to have to change is, is KJ staying too far on the outside within Rodriguez's range. He's having trouble deciphering what's safe and what's not safe. And he's on that end of Rodriguez's punches, and Rodriguez was able to get in some nice shots from the outside. I think when he gets him close and gets on the ropes as he did towards the end of the round, he needs to keep his arms free and he needs to keep those hands going and, and keep throwing punches on the inside because that's where the, his best bet to score. The corner of KJ Harris and Lombardi are telling him that his opponent is not in great shape, but he is. I believe KJ Harris and Lombardi was actually originally scheduled to take on another pro debuting fighter tonight before Rodriguez stepped in. I do believe they get, had given me a different name initially. Um, one thing I would do if I was KJ, he should have been doing a little more in the first round because it's only a four round fight, is, is this guy's body is, is like right out there to be hit. On the inside, he should be targeting that body with some big shots and that's seriously going to tire him out for the third and the fourth rounds. That's it, he needs to keep those hands going, exactly what he did right there. And Rodriguez, noting that's not where he wants to be, is trying his best to tie him up. Nice right hand by KJ Harrison Lombardi. And KJ Harrison Lombardi's corner may note that he's in better shape than Rodriguez in between round one and two. I'm noticing here in round two that the mouth of Rodriguez is open and his black mouthpiece is visible. I think a number of things there. One is definitely, you know, he's winded, but I, the mouthpiece looks, looks extra large. Um, a lot of the guys nowadays, they just get these mouthpieces out of the catalog and they, they don't want to spend the money to get those molded mouthpieces that just stay in your mouth the entire fight. And um, you can see that sometimes. It definitely affects their performance. And, and now you can see uh, Rodriguez is definitely um, more in, in defensive mode this round than he was the last round. I think Harrison's having a much better round this round than he's in the first round. He's not waiting as long on the outside and staying in that, that position where he's right in range. And he's moving his head a little bit more this round too. Two nice adjustments that he made from the first to second round. KJ Harrison Lombardi, a very active schedule as a professional boxer as he fought less than a month ago on a Saturday afternoon show in Canton, Massachusetts. And that's probably where his corner is getting in saying you're in better shape because he, I mean, he just fought. I think he went the distance in that fight. And um, I think he went right back to the gym after and he's right back here today. I thought that second round was a much better round for KJ. Um, I thought he might have pulled out the first round too, uh, but the second round I thought he won pretty pretty decisively. Well, two rounds in the books. We're at the midway point. How do you have this fight scored at this juncture? I have it two rounds to, to none for KJ. The first round could have gone either way. You could definitely make a case for uh, Rodriguez. However, I don't like to give a guy a round based on awkwardness, and I, and I think that first round, a lot of his success came just from being so tall and, and KJ having difficulty with that. I think uh, KJ ended up landed um, some pretty good shots on the inside that first round. With that being said, I did give the first round to Rodriguez. Well, perfect, perfect. No, we can, I agree. I mean, it could have gone either way. I was, I was debating it and torn, and I said, you know what, let me just 
go with my first inclination, and that's what I did. But the second round, I thought that uh, KJ uh, definitely made some nice adjustments from the first round. So round three of the scheduled four-rounder. Build as a middleweight fight, but really a super middleweight fight with one guy weighing in 163, the other guy 165. And Harrison doing a good job coming forward and having Rodriguez in retreat before Rodriguez finds his ground and stands it. I think KJ's confidence is going up, and I think Rodriguez is going down, and that, that was a big difference, too, in the first round, although he caught him with a nice straight right hand there coming inside. But you can see uh, Rodriguez now breathing heavily. Um, that right there is the area where KJ does not want to be, though. He needs to decide if he wants to get in or get out and get outside of Rodriguez's range. And on the inside there, he needs to throw those body shots. Not just one. He needs to keep throwing those body shots till Joey Lupino comes and separate, separates him. Harrison does a good job of, of body to head as well in his combinations. J. Harrison Lombardi moments ago. It definitely seems to me like Rodriguez is a little bit winded at this point. He's not throwing that much. And I don't think KJ is a little bit winded as well because he's not super active. But um, uh, he's definitely more in a defensive mode, Rodriguez, at this point. And right there, I think, is where KJ needs to be throwing leather. On the inside, he's right where he wants to be. And at that position, Rodriguez really has no opportunity to hit KJ because his arms are so long. I didn't see their amateur fight, but there must be a sharp contrast between the, the amateur fight and this because I think KJ has pretty much controlled the action from the beginning of the second round till now. I would agree with you, and with that, KJ Harrison gets the nod on my card in round three with one more round to go in this scheduled four-round super middleweight tilt. Peter Zimmer and Ted Pan and Jardis coming to you from the Twin River Event Center in Lincoln, Rhode Island. For this evening of boxing, which will be headlined later on by Peter Manfredo Jr. taking on Rich Gingrass. My first time coming to the Twin River Casino since they introduced table games, Teddy. Oh, that's exciting for after the fight then, isn't it? I might have to play a hand of blackjack or two. It's always a fun time, always a fun time. Well, I guess it's fun when you win, but not so much fun when you lose. Although I've had the pleasure of playing here a couple times. It's a great casino, a great venue for fights, and um, the food's really good at the restaurants as well. I play basic strategy, and I've won more than I've lost. That's the way to play it. Because I know when to quit. Yep. So I'm ahead. That's the biggest hurdle in gambling. Know when to say when. Fourth round here. I think uh, Rodriguez would have to come up with a major, major round to, to even come close on the cards. And you can almost see when, when Rodriguez steps back him taking that big kind of like sigh and the big breath. Um, you know, this is fourth round in a professional fight. His territory has not yet seen. Nice right hand right there from KJ. KJ Harrison, not known as a knockout puncher, does not have any knockouts in his professional career. 
Probably not going to stop Rodriguez, but if Rodriguez does hit the canvas here in the final round, probably going to be due to two things. KJ coming on strong, and Rodriguez is just looking tired. Yeah, exhaustion. I mean, if that right hand didn't put him down, it's going to be tough because that was a very nice right hand coming in. Watch your head. Watch your head. Great. But you could, right now, Rodriguez is basically in, in defensive mode. He wants to go the distance, holding him every chance he gets, not offering much of an offense at this point. It's nice to see 2K, KJ getting a revenge win uh, in his last amateur loss. And Mike Rodriguez doing more holding than anything here in round four. And referee Joey Lapino certainly warning him. Rodriguez has the height. I think what he needs to go is go back in a little bit better physical condition and work on using that huge height advantage that he would have against many fighters. Um, he didn't. He started to in the first round, but then he kind of just threw that to the wind. That's partly in due to uh, KJ's adjustment from the first round on as well. KJ is an excellent trainer in Artie Artwell. Artie was a was a main sparring partner for guys like Burt Cooper back in the day. Uh, he trained Brian Barboza, he trained a lot of really top fighters. In fact, I think he trained Burt Cooper when Burt Cooper fought Evander Holyfield for the, for the championship. Smoking Burt Cooper still around. He is still around. I saw that in the, in the results the other day he was fighting, or the schedule. And following that stern warning from referee Drew Lapino, he now docks a point from Mike Rodriguez. So even Mike Rodriguez did win that first round as my card. More or less nullified at this point yes. as he gets a point taken away for excessive holding here in round four and continues holding as Lombardi Harrison comes right at him. Well, at this point, it's either hold or get knocked out, I think, for him because he's sucking wind big time. And those body shots right there from Lombardi are looking really nice. Artie Otwell also trained sizzling Sammy Gerard, a lightweight from Providence who fought Floyd Mayweather early on in his career. Well, round four and the fight comes to conclusion and Mike Rodriguez is hunched over in fatigue in his corner. KJ Harrison Lombardi standing upright and much more relaxed as he probably will improve his record to 4-0-1 in a mere moments when the official scorecards are tabulated. KJ Harrison Lombardi, despite the fact that he just beat an opponent making his pro debut and did the same in his most recent fight a month ago in Massachusetts, 4-0-1, he's probably ready to step up to the sixth round or soon. How do you see him fitting in with the assortment of middleweights and super middleweights on the New England scene, say guys like Joey Gardner and Keith Cosmo. I mean, I think he could, he could fight well with them. The only thing I would like to see him do, actually, is I think he could probably get down. Um, just watching him with these big guys, I, I think he's he's going to have a lot more success if he's down at like 154 and down to maybe the 154 to 160 range. Because fighting for the 160, 168 range, this guy's going to be a lot bigger than him. Um, he's not that big physically, and I think if he was at 160 or if he could ever make 154, I think he'd have much more success. If that's the case, how do you see him fitting in with guys like Ethan Pena, who we saw win in the opening bout of the evening? Well, they fought in, in both, de both their pro debuts. They fought. It was a very good fight, very close. And um, it, it, I'd love to see that matchup again. I think it was a very entertaining fight. Very well it could happen again. You're watching boxing from the Twin River Event Center inside the confines of the Twin River Casino in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Peter Zimbor and Teddy Panajardis calling the action as hundreds and soon to be thousands of fans trickling in for what they're hoping is a good main event between Peter Manfredo Jr. and Rich Gingras, but some very evenly matched undercard bouts prior to that as we've seen exhibited in our first two fights, both of which have gone the distance. And with that, the scorecards have now been collected, so we send it inside the ring to our announcer, Rick Provost. After four rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Trella scores the bout 39-36.
Judge San Martino scores the bout 39-36. And Judge Feldman scores the bout 38-37. And your winner by unanimous decision, Harrison K.J. Lombardi. So K.J. Harrison Lombardi, victorious via unanimous decision. Scores of 39 to 36 twice and 38 to 37 once. All in favor for Harrison and Lombardi. That point deduction against Rodriguez did play a role. Definitely. Um, 40, 39 to 36. There may have been even round as well. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe someone yep. gave the opening round to Rodriguez. Might have been that, yep. As I did. Yes, Nevertheless, KJ Harrison Lombardi still unbeaten at 4 0 1. Mike Rodriguez drops his pro debut. You're watching boxing from the Twin River Event Center in Lincoln, Rhode Island.